Hey everyone, Notion Workflow here. Today, I'll show you how to create a synced team timesheet with four properties so you can add it into your workspace seamlessly. We'll use two formula properties, two buttons, a few database views, and a Notion page to set this up. The formulas are pretty simple in this setup, and you don't need to rely on Notion automations for this tutorial that I'll show you today. We'll create this so that even if you have multiple team members working in your database, everyone can use this timesheet at the same time. Time. We'll also set it up so that you can copy and paste this new timesheet system anywhere within your workspace with a synced block. So with all that being said, every timesheet entry will require a tiny bit of manual entry for every timesheet entry to be considered complete. This just means adjusting the end date within a date property so that the formula can calculate the difference between the start and end date to measure time. I'm going to try to keep this video is short and concise so that you can use this as inspiration to create an even better timesheet system because I know that this can be made better. Again, two formulas will form the foundation of this setup and then we'll use various Notion features to create and build from there. As you can see, I've titled it hours and end date unspecified. Let's get jump in right away. The basic way that we're going to set up hours is through the date between formula function. We're just going to use the dates from the date property that we currently have and we're going to use it for both the start and end date that a date between formula function requires so we can we're going to do minutes and then we're going to close it obviously this looks kind of funky but the way that we're going to be able to create this formula is simply by using the date start and the date end formula functions we're going to just add date start open it up, close it out on the other end, and then date end of date. And that means that when a date has end date specified, it'll take the front and the back, the start and the end dates that are specified within the date property, and that was how we'll be calculating hours. Obviously, this is a very, very simple formula, and we're going to build on this further so that we can make every timesheet entry appear in terms of hours as that is the conventional way to measure time. Because we're measuring in minutes, we're going to want to divide it by 60 to create that conversion factor between minutes and hours. And let's say we include time like so. Now we have 1.1 hours appear, but what if we change this to 107, right? So we get this crazy long number that we're not going to need to see all the digits of. And so this is where we're going to use the round function and round this number that we get so that we only see two of the digits that are needed to mark time. We're going to start with the round in the beginning of our formula that we started with, open it up, and with the round function it's a little funky. You have to multiply the current number by a factor of 10, in our case 100, and then once you do that you can then divide it by that same number so that we can use the number of digits within a factor of 10 to specify the number of integers that we'll round to. In our case, because it's 100, we're going to have two digits. If we want to do three, we'll do 1,000. If we want to do more, we can multiply it by factors of 10 to add more digits. In our case, we just need two digits, so 10 times 10, that's a factor of 2, and there's two integers in our rounding formula. We're going to do that, and now we have our hours that we get and extract when we have a start time and an end time located in a date property. Now we're doing that to simplify the process of time entry. Obviously you can do this in various ways but in our case we are just doing this. Now the next formula property that we're going to want to utilize is our end date unspecified. So whenever a date property does not have an end date let's create a way in which we can isolate those time entries that have no end date specified. And we're just going to use a simple if function to create that filter. We're going to do ifs, and because we've created that hours formula, and because hours only works when both the start date and the end date appear, we can say when the hours is empty, which we can do hours, and we can do dot empty. That's the power of the dot notation there with the Notion Formulas 2.0 update. And when that is the case, we want to create a filter 
four hours being empty, which means that the end date of the date property has not been specified. In our case, we can easily create that filter by using true and false as our primary logic functions, and that will create an empty block, or we keep it false. So when the hours is empty, we'll have a checked box, and when the hours is not empty, this will be unchecked. So an example here, if I create a new entry and only specify one date, we can see that the end date gets checked, and that's how that formula works. These are very simple, right? And this just begins to highlight how much Notion's adapted their most recent features to sort of create this sync timesheet that I'm showing you today. So now that we've created this filter where end date is unspecified, we can create a view in which we can isolate those entries. So let's duplicate this view and title it no end date. So now what we can do when we create this new database view is add a filter to end date unspecified. And we want to say checked. So what this does is it isolates all those database entries that don't have an end date through this property that we created. And the reason why we created this is so that we can accommodate this method of isolating unfinished time entries through these button actions that we'll move on to next. We want to create a clock in button and we want to add a page in that database that we just created. And we will utilize the date and we'll also use the person property and edit those within this button. How we'll do that is by selecting on date and zoom now and going to the person property and saying person who clicked button. And we can title it whatever we want. And that is after we configure these basic property configurations within this button, we can click on done. So now see what happens when I click on clock in. My name appears and the current date or the clock in time gets stamped within that date entry. And notice how there's no end date specified and so it is check marked. If we go to our classic table view, it'll look like this compared to our previous entries. And the reason why I have these board views open now is so that we can sort and group by person. We can go to the board view, go to group by person, and then we can show hours and the date if we want to as well. Another cool thing with the board view is if we were to optionally create a last edited time entry like we did here, we can group by that last edited time so that you can see the time sheet entries by now people and hours based on relative time. So these board views can be pretty helpful, right? If you want to isolate by people, group by people, group by recency of timesheet creations. So going back to our table, we have our two formulas. We've got our clock in button, and now we need to create our final step of clocking out. In our case, because we are creating a synced team timesheet, we are going to, instead of creating a similar action to our clock in button, we want to send everyone to a page in which they can see their timesheet entries. Just like in the beginning of the video where we start with this untitled page, this is going to be clock out page. And the reason why we are clocking people out is because we want to make it so that once they click on the clock out, we want to configure this button so that we can send everyone to this clock out page. So now we've configured it so that when you click on clock out, it shows in center peak that page that we just titled. And the reason why we're doing that is so that we can embed a database view within the page so that regardless of who sees the database view on the page, it will only isolate to their entries that they've clocked in as. The way we're going to be able to do that is by creating a relational filter after we link the timesheet entry and the no end date database view within this page. We can hide that. And so now we have that filter where it's only going to show where the end date goes unspecified. But because we're sending everybody within this related database to this page, we also need to add another filter using the person property. Notice how at the very top of this filter we have me. We're going to click on that. And that just means that it's only going to filter out database entries in which your account is associated with the entry. This means that 
whoever goes to this page, they will get an automated filtered view timesheet entries in which the end date is unspecified and in which the person property is associated with their Notion account. Maybe we can change that name and icon to sort of enhance it up a little bit and we can go back to that page. So now when we clock in, we're going to see that timesheet entry up here. And now when we want to clock out, we can click on clock out and that timesheet entry that I just clicked on 1204 appears with the end date unspecified. And so the way that we clock out now is goes like this. We click on open, we click on date, we click on end date, and then now we can specify the date that we finished. Maybe I worked for an hour, clicked on it, and now when I go out, that entry disappears in the no end date timesheet. And so now if you go to the board view that we created, we can see that timesheet entry I created where I worked for one hour. And we can go to the group filter and go to sum hours. So now the number that appears next to the person's name has the amount of hours they've worked in total and it will neatly show those hours as well. If we go to the board view, we can see that new timesheet entry up here where I had my person property showing and then my total hours. We can also specify the date and show that date we really want. These views are very handy and the way that we can sort of sync this across your entire workspace is to create a toggle block, maybe add a neat little title with it with database views and now we can consolidate those four big elements and the four key elements we need to create the synced timesheet. The way we're going to be able to do that is do slash synced block. We can drag and click, hover over to the six dots, and then place it in there. So we can delete those extra spaces, perhaps, and consolidate on that space, and copy and sync. So now, if we have another page, for example, we can just paste it in there and have that clock in and clock out timesheet system anywhere within your workspace and have everything consolidated within these four elements. As you can imagine, you can probably do a lot more with this but I think I've given you just enough to get started and customize this to your exact needs for your team or for yourself. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Let me know if you learned something new and how you might want to build upon what you're seeing today. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. and I'll see you in the next one.